Were you looking for the formula? Yeah. Would you like me to write it down again? Yeah. 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 So sum of the first n terms of a geometric series is first n over one minus r to the n all over one minus r. Wait, yeah, you know why I know this formula? I took algebra two. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Hey. Hello. No more. No more. Not only the board. Sit down. Okay, okay, that's good. And the most important lecture of the chapter, but we're not going to even get there. We're going to pull up period eight. Wait, does it make sense to film not this the lecture one yesterday? if the, videos, what? the video was wrong for the last one? It doesn't make sense to film this one because you don't know. No, the, the video, video is wrong. one he's actually called. Yeah, this is the one. Oh, oh. Okay. This is the one, no, Bowling. Isn't it different? No, like every video. I don't know. <laughs> okay, two. From a standard, I'm only going to give you the formula now. I'll leave it up to you to do the computation. From a standard deck of 52 cards, five cards are dealt. How, now, on a, on a quiz, on the quiz and on the test, I'm not going to do five cards because the numbers get too big. So maybe three or four cards. That would be reasonable, right? Yeah. Okay, we're doing 2F. How many ways can you receive at least one of each suit? Now, very, this is a very good problem to ask. So what you got to do is, what are, the, what are the four suits that you have? You got to break it up into cases. You got spades, hearts, clubs, diamonds, right? Now, if you have to have at least one of each suit, what, what are the cases? Two, one, one, one. Two spades, one heart, one club, one diamond. Two hearts, one spade, one club, one diamond. Two clubs with big one hundred diamond. Two diamonds with big one hundred diamond. Can anybody think of any other cases? No. No. See, that's it. So here. It so let's do the first case. How many spades are in the deck? How many ways can I select two of them? Thirteen. Choose two. How many hearts are in the deck? How many ways can I select one? Thirteen. Choose one. What about the club? Thirteen. Choose one. What about the diamond? Thirteen. Choose one. And then, can you see that in the other three cases, you you don't have the same numbers, except when you switch to. Yeah. So instead of making four cases that are exactly the same and adding them up, wouldn't it be just faster to multiply by four? Yes, sir. Bam. Aha! I know exactly what the Yamamoto is thinking. <laughs> Tell me if I'm wrong, because every year somebody asks this question. They go, can't you just go, I'm going to pick one spade, one heart, one club, and one diamond, and then the fifth card can be anything else, right? It can be anything. Is that what you're thinking? So then 48, choose one. Why doesn't that work, Mr. Park? That's because when you do this, you're counting things more than once. That's why. Here, let me give you an example. What if somebody said, okay, uh, one spade, give me something. Seven of spades. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something. Okay, the next card is a heart. Uh, three of hearts. Okay, club. King of clubs. A diamond. Four of diamonds. And the fifth card can be anything. So give, give me something. Seven. Seven of hearts. Correct? Okay. So what if you did that? Okay. Now let me ask you this. What if you did this? Okay. I'm going to pick a spade. Seven of spades. Okay, hearts, seven of hearts. Can you see where I'm going now? King of clubs. Four of diamonds. And then the three can be anything else. So what if I pick the three of hearts? I counted this one twice, but they're exactly the same hand. That's why you cannot do it like that. You have to do it like this. I'm going to tell you right now, this problem is on the quiz, it ends on the test. 
unless it's not on the quiz, but I can guarantee you it's on the test. So when you have a problem like this, you just got to remember to make the cases. G. G. Four of a kind. We did. Oh, we didn't do this yesterday. Yes, we did. We did it in class. We did it in class. Yeah. Let's go to the video to verify we did it in class. Let's okay, do it. Do a specific case. What do you want to do? Four kings. What did we do yesterday? Four kings. So we just do the same thing then. Just pretend it didn't happen yesterday. Four kings, and the fifth card is anything. Except the king. The queen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you didn't you didn't answer on the above the desk, right? Huh? No. Be no, because otherwise it's gonna be out of view. Oh no. Because we're videoing. Out of view. Oh that desk? Yeah, I never hit it. Okay. <laughs> okay, how many kings are in the deck? No, don't <laughs> How many kings are in the deck? Four. How many ways can I select four of them? Four kings, four, which is one. But this fifth card can is anything besides a king. So in the deck, how many cards in the deck are not kings? Forty-eight. How many ways can I select one of them? Forty-eight. Choose one, right? So basically, that's just forty-eight, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's how many ways you can get four kings. What about four aces, four queens, four jacks, four tens, four nines? Then you times it by thirteen. Boom. Now you guys are starting to ask questions we already did. H, exactly two distinct pairs. You know why I put the word distinct there? Because some of you think four, four aces is two pairs. That's, why. <laughs> oh, that's what happened yesterday. Okay, so let's do a specific case. How about two kings and two queens? You want to do that? And then the fifth card is anything that's not a king or a queen, right? Because if it were a king, then you would have a full house. So it cannot be a king or a queen, you understand? Okay, how many kings are in the deck? How many ways can I select two of them to be in my hand? Four, choose two, and same thing with the queens. And then, what about this fifth card? Anything that's not a king or a queen. So in the, in the deck, how many cards are not kings or queens? 44. 44, I'm gonna pick one, so 44, choose one. Some more. <laughs> I'm smelling some more. Oh, okay. Wait, what'd you get? Amy, Amy, Oberlin's a girl. Oh, yeah. I don't want to dis disrupt your conversation. We're, we're, uh, just, just finish it. Just finish it. Me? Yeah. Okay, so this is how many ways you can get a pair of kings and queens. But what about aces and sevens? Or tens and fours? Or nines and threes. So you multiply by 13, choose two. Out of the 13 values, how many ways can you select two of them to be this and that? Are we getting the hang of card problems? No. no. <laughs> then I gotta give more homework. No, 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 no. no, I'm serious. Up until about eight years ago, we did all the poker hands on there. That was the homework. All of it. So this worksheet was actually way longer before. Okay, number six, seven, and eight. Albert. Okay, number three. A committee of four is to be chosen from Al, Burke, Cal, Dan, Ernie, Fred, George, and Harry. That's eight people. Now, Bert and Ernie must either serve together or not at all, because they have to be together, right? Ernie. Oh, that's cute. What about Ducky? <laughs> so, what are the two cases? Bert and Ernie are on the committee. Bert and Ernie are off the committee, correct? Yes. Okay, now, if Bert and Ernie are already on the committee, that's two people taken up, how many more people do you need to pick? Six. No, how many people do you need? Two. two people. And you have six people to choose from because you've got to take away Bert and Ernie, right? Because they're already out of the committee. So of the remaining six people, how many ways can I select two of them to be on that committee? Six. six choose two. Now, what if Bert and Ernie are off the committee? So they're not even considered, right? So you take them away. There's six people. 
remaining. How many ways can I select four of them to be on the page? Six choose four. Six choose four. And what do I do with these two numbers? You add them because there's a big space between them, right? Yeah. No, why am I adding them? Because they are mutually exclusive cases. Not because they're far apart. <laughs> okay, number six. You sure we don't need to do these other ones? I think you, I think if we do four, I think if we do them, you're gonna learn something, you know. Number four. Oh. Yeah. No, why don't you just put nine one one all right there? Nine one one all. I don't get it. You get it? Nine one one, and you help all. That's why. Oh, I think because nine one one looks like all. <laughs> yeah, finally, some, finally somebody figured it out. Oh, is that really? Yes. <laughs> you, you, you I thought that was because 9 11. Yeah, you need help. Emergency, all. You got to do all. I couldn't do any of the homework problems. Not I chose not to do the homework problems. What? You know who I'm talking about here. <laughs> Several of you. I'm talking about you couldn't do it. Exactly. Okay, number four. If you have a penny, nickel, dime, quarter, and half dollar, how many different sums of money can you make? Okay, so there's five different coins. So how can you make a sum of money? Well, first of all, you have to have at least one coin, right? So what are the cases? You could have one coin, you could have two, three, four, or five coins, right? Okay, so here we go. Huh? Okay, you have five coins. How many ways can I select one of them to be in the sum? I choose one. Okay, now out of these five coins, how many ways can I select two of those coins to be in the sum? I choose two. What about three coins? Five choose three. Five choose four. And finally, five choose five. Now, what do I do with these numbers? You add them because there's a big space between them. No, because they're mutually exclusive. So how many people did the problem that way? Now, is there a better way to do it? Yes, that's a better way. Do the complement and subtract it from the total. What's the complement of this? No coins are in the total. Five choose zero, because out of the five coins, how many ways can I select none of them? And then you subtract that from the total. Now, what is the total? Okay, here. 31. A penny has how many choices? Think about it. The penny has how many choices? Two. It's either in the sum or it's not. Oh, like it's either in your pocket or it's not in your pocket. What about the nickel? It has two choices. It's either in your pocket or not in your pocket. What about the dime? Two, two, two. So isn't that just two to the fifth? So the answer is there's 32 minus 1, which is 32. So that's another way to do it. 31. What did I say? 32. 32. 32. 1 is 32. Yeah, but you know what I meant. <laughs> now, does this all make sense to you? Like, A, we learned this when we studied the binomial theorem. Like the power of the No, 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 no. No. OK, look. Yeah, no. Okay, let's go back to the second quarter when I taught you about the binomial theorem and Pascal's triangle, right? What are the numbers in, fifth, in the fifth row of Pascal's triangle? One. Five choose zero, five choose one, five choose two, five choose three, five choose four, and so forth, right? If you add all the numbers in the fifth row of Pascal's triangle, what do you get? You get two to the fifth, remember that? So, if you want to find what this is, isn't the answer just 2 to the 5th minus 1? Mm -hmm. See how it all makes sense? We're honors people! You guys really don't remember that. If you add all the numbers in the 6th row of Pascal's triangle, you're going to get 2 to the 6. Mm -hmm. Mr. Park, that was 3 months ago. No, it was actually more, yeah? Mr. Park, that was 4 months ago. <laughs> Wait a minute, that was in like October. Yeah. Mr. Park, that was five months ago. Well, when did you first get your name? When you were born, 17 years ago, and you still remember it. No, no further questions, Your Honor. Okay, next, number five. We might as well do it all, that way we can get it on video anyway, right? 
Because some of you gonna be desperate the day before the test. Okay, number five. What is number five? How many ways can you distribute twelve different candy bars to the three Stooges? You guys know who the three Stooges are? No. Uh, Mo, Larry, and Curly. You guys never watched the Three Stooges? Oh, it's the old show. Yeah, yeah, the black and white comedy show. But wait, they're all Stooges. Stooges. Yeah. It is like Stooges. Yeah. Whatever, Stooges, Stooges, same thing. I had a foreign SAT verbal. Get, get, off, get off my back. Okay, now look. This is, a very, this, is, this is what we call the distribution problem. This is an important problem in combinatorics. So you got to learn how to do this. Okay, now since the order doesn't matter, okay, who, who do you want to go first? Mo, Larry, or Curly? Mo. Oh. Okay, there's 12 candy bars on the table. Okay, all different. Mo walks in the room. Okay. <laughs> How many ways can he select five of them? Well, choose five. Okay, now who, who do you want to go next, Larry or Curly? Curly. Okay, Curly. Curly's going to get three. Now, how many candy bars are on the table now? Seven. seven. There's only seven candy bars on the, on the table. So Curly comes in. How many ways can he select three of them? Three. Seven, seven, seven two, three. three. <laughs> <laughs> how many candy bars are on the table now? Four. There's only four candy bars left. Okay, now Larry comes in. How many four. ways can he select four of them? Four. four choose four, which is one. Boom, that's your answer. But there's something interesting about this if you compute this, okay? How do you compute 12 choose 5? What's the formula? 12 factorial seven, 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 over 5 factorial over 7 factorial, right? Oh, yeah. oh my god. Okay, this one. 7 factorial over 3 factorial, 4 factorial, and that's just one, right? That's cool. And then look. Cool, 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 cool. So all you have left is 12 factorial over 5 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial. That's, cool. that's the distribution problem. You guys get it? Yeah. This is the total number of candy bars. This is how many Mo gets, that's how many Curly gets, and that's how many Larry gets. Wow. So you can apply this to other problems. Like, you guys, you guys ever played Bridge before? What? You ever heard of the card game Bridge? We call Mahjong. Oh, yeah. Well, how come you know Mahjong if that's an old people game? Just cool. really hard. Okay, now I, I don't know how to play bridge, but I understand you have a 52 card deck and you deal 13 cards to four different people, right? How many ways can that be done? That's this problem. <laughs> so, following the distribution problem, what did we just learn here? How, how many ways can I deal 13 cards each to four different people? 52 factorial over 13 factorial, 13 factorial, 13 factorial, 13 factorial. Boom. Whatever. Number six. In problem number three, if everyone shakes hands with everyone else exactly once, how many handshakes took place? Well, what's problem three? Oh, we got eight people. So we got Albert, Cal, Dan, Ed, Fred, what happened to Alfred? George and Harry. And Harry. Oh, no, because look, it's problem number three. We're in America. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is, that's what Trump said. Wait, where is Alfred? <laughs> what? They're all from different countries, though. Who? Alfredo. Alfredo Bernardo. No, they're all from Philippines. <laughs> what are you thinking? Well, Diego. He's uh, Hispanic. What, whatever. Okay, if everybody shook hands with everybody else exactly once, how many handshakes took place? Now, this is the way you did it in elementary school, right? You go, Alfredo can shake hands with Bernardo Connors, the Eagle, Wobble, he Dobble. That's seven, right? Is this the way you did it in elementary school? And then Bernardo can shake hands with Connors, the Eagle, Wobble, he Dobble. So that's six. You see a pattern here? Yes. Uh, Carlos can shake hands with Diego, Eduardo, Fuego, Guapo, he Dobble. That's five. Do you, you see a pattern here, or there's no pattern? Okay, where did I go now? Oh, Diego now can shake hands with Eduardo Fuego Guapo Hidalgo. That's four. Eduardo can shake hands with Fuego Guapo Hidalgo. Should, should I keep on going? Yes. Okay, Fuego can shake hands with Guapo Hidalgo. That's two. And then finally, Guapo shake hands with Hidalgo. That's one. And you just add up those numbers, right? Oh, I see a pattern. But then, but, but then what if you had like a hundred people? Or a thousand people, you gonna you gonna do all this? 
Oh, I would. I have no doubt some of you would, right? <laughs> but how about do use combinatorics? The answer is A choose two. What? No. Think about it. You have eight people. How many ways can I select two of them to shake hands, right? Because when you shake hands, it's two people, right? So every time you pick two people, that's a handshake. No, I'm not sure how you shake hands, or do you have like five people just put their hands in and run with it? <laughs> no, I think it's just two people, right? Oh, every gets James. No, you you gotta you better learn from this problem though. This is gonna like, make an appearance on the test. Handshake. Huh? Handshake. Hand, it's called the handshake problem. <laughs> no worry, it's gonna come up on the practice test. Okay, number seven. Okay, the cabin problem. Okay, this problem is gonna be on the test too. Look, this is exactly how you do combinatorics. You do a whole bunch of problems, and then this is the handshake problem. This is the cabin problem. Huh? Roughly, how many questions do we have to Roughly 20. We get 12 free points. Don't worry about it. 12 free points. No, no, just no. Each one is a problem. Is Maybe. But then, see, in problem seven, you got Bert and Ernie. What if I did Fred and Barney? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> or instead of two people, what if I put like Mo Larry Curly or Snap Crackle Pop? <laughs> okay, we got the most important lecture. We're not even there. Okay, cabin A holds three people. How should I write that? Cabin B holds four people, and cabin C holds five people. How many ways can 12 people be assigned to these cabins if Bert and Ernie insist on rooming together? Oh, okay. Now, we don't ask why, we just accommodate their requests. Okay? So, what are the three cases? Bert and Ernie are in cabin A, right? So, Bert and Ernie are in cabin A, and we should do that. Bert and Ernie are in cabin B, and Bert and Ernie are in cabin C, right? Those are the, those are the cases. Okay, now, if Bert and Ernie are already in cabin A already, how many more people do I need? One. One more person. So, how many total people are there? Twelve. So, Bert and Ernie are taken away. Of the remaining ten people, how many ways can I select one of them to go into cabin A? Ten choose one. Ten choose one. Now, there's only nine people left. How many ways can I select four of them to go into B? Ten choose four. Ten choose four. And then, there's five people left. How many ways can I select five of them to go into cabin C? Five choose five, which is one. Yeah. Do I have to write the five choose five? Yeah. Okay, I will. Okay, now let's do the second case. What if Bert and Ernie are in cabin B? How many more people need to be in this cabin? Then? Two. I need two more people. So of the remaining ten people, how many ways can I select two of them to go into B? You see what's going on here? There's eight people left. How many ways can I select three of them to go into A? A choose three, and then five choose five, right? Now, some of you are gonna be saying, what if, no, what if after you did this, what if I said I wanna pick the five people to go into cabin C? Okay, let's do that. How many ways can I select five people to go into cabin C? A choose five, and then three choose three. But can you see it's exactly the same? Because A choose three is equal to A choose five. Yeah. See, that's why it works. Okay, and then finally, what if Bert and Ernie are cabin C? So two people already spoken for, two slots taken up. So of the remaining 10 people, how many ways can I select three of them to go into C? 10 choose three. Now, there's only seven people left. How many ways can I select three of them to go into A? Seven choose three. There's four people left. How many ways can I select four of them to go into B? Four choose four. And then what do I do with these numbers? You add them because there's a big space in between. So you write that formula down on the test. You get three out of four points, and then the last point is can you compute it? Hold on. You're subtracting the complement. The complement. Yeah, that's uh, In this problem, I don't, what, 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 is, what is the complement then? They don't want to be That's hard. That's hard. Yeah. Also, you can separate by the Now, I'm trying to think how, how you, see, like if it takes a while to even think of what the complement is, then you don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Okay, number eight. Okay, finally the last one. Okay, we did this problem. This is the card problem, except now there are people. 
Okay? You got six women, five men, and four children. How many different committees of four can be selected if each committee must contain at least one member from each group? That's just like at least one card from each suit, right? Remember that? So it's the same problem except now it's people. So we have woman, man, child. Okay, what are the cases? We're gonna make a <laughs> we're gonna make a four person committee, but you have to have at least one member from each group. So what are the cases? Two women, one man, one child, right? Two men, one woman, one child. Two childs, one woman, one man. Can anyone think of any other case? No. No. Okay, so here we go. How many ways can I select two women? Six choose two, one man, five choose one, one child, four choose one. Okay, now what about one woman, two mans, one child? And then one woman, one man, two childs. And then what do I do with these numbers? You add them up because there's a big space between them. And how come I can't do the Yamamoto way? <laughs> because because, because you're counting Choi, not acting up. Choi? <laughs> <laughs> but my jokes are just going oh, way I'm over your head. Alright, today the most important lecture. So now, okay, so this stuff. We should have learned before, but we didn't, so that's why we're just like we're limping along here. Okay, now we gotta learn high level combinatorics. So let me look at the problems you're gonna. Tonight, some of you are just gonna cry at this. Okay, so what if you had, let's say you have, let's say you have five letters. How many ways can I arrange these five letters to make a five letter word? Five. Would an answer be five factorial? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, but what if you have repeated letters? Like, what if you had A A B C D? Now, how many five-letter words can you make? Is the answer still five factorial? No, it's going to be more or less. Yes, but how much less? So what do you do when you have repetitions? So we call this permutation with repetition. So if these were all different letters, the answer would be 5 factorial. However, since there's two A's, how do I adjust for that? Well, just think about it. If you have two letters, how many ways can you arrange them? Two. Two, two factorial, right? So what do you think? Divide by two factorial. So that's how you take care of permutations with repetitions. Now, Whenever you have a problem like this, you know what my favorite word is? Like tonight you got Mississippi, got repeated letters, yeah. yeah? But you know what my favorite word is? Alfalfa. See, all repeated letters. That's good, yeah? yeah? So, how many ways can you arrange the seven letters of the word alfalfa and to make a seven letter word? Well, if they were all different, the answer would be seven factorial. However, there's three A's, so what do you do? You divide by 3 factorial, but there's two L's. There's two F's. Boom, that's your answer. So whenever you have repeated letters, you divide by the number of repeated letters factorial. So Mississippi, you can have fun with that. And you know what some other words folks like to use, like bookkeeper, beekeeper, Honolulu. Some, and then you know in the old pre-calculus book we used to have? You know what they gave? The longest non-scientific word in the English dictionary? Anti this Terrianism. Have fun counting the repeated letters in that. Because because the old pre-calculus book, they want you to use your calculator, so then, you know, but then who wants to count how many letters there are? Okay, now you might think, oh, that's pretty neat, but see, if you're a pre-calculus regular, then on the test, then I'll just give you like, how many ways can you arrange the letters of the word, what, what has repeated letters? Google. 
<laughs> no, 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 ten to ten, ten to hundred power, right? Mm -hmm. A one followed by a hundred zero. zeros. No, ten to yeah, ten to the hundred power. Okay, but that's pre-calculus regular. We're pre-calculus honored. So what kind of problems can I give you? Like this. If you have a map, see like like over there. Let's say you have a map of a city like this. Okay? And you want to get from point A to point B. And you can only travel either east or south. How many different paths are possible? Now, you did this problem in pre-algebra. Mrs. Wada told me. See, there's, so, there's a way to do it if you're in intermediate school, but then there's a way to do it when you're in high school. Okay, this is the way you did it. In, well, of course, when you're in elementary school, you just use the method of exhaustion, right? You go like this. East, 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 east. <laughs> south, 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 south. One. <laughs> east, 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 east. South, east. South, 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 south. Two. And you just keep counting until you get them all, right? That's the way you do it in elementary school. Now, in intermediate school, Mrs. Wada told me. She, she taught you. She told me. I didn't know. Well, it doesn't matter. All the intermediate school teachers teach the same thing, right? And if you're in math counts, I know you learned it. Okay, how many paths are there from A to this point right here? One. One, so you put one there. How many paths are there from this point to this point? One. One. How many paths are there from this point to that point? There's two. So, see, because you can go this dunk or dunk dunk, right? And then you look for a pattern. How many paths are there from here to here? One. In fact, isn't it one all along here, like that? Okay, how many paths are there from here to here? You can go east, east, south, or you can go east, south, east, or you can go south, east, east, or oh, there's three. What about from here to here? And then, hey, you somebody. That's Pascal's triangle. Except it's tilted. It's tilted like this. So you gotta go like this. So all you gotta do is fill in Pascal's triangle until you get there. Okay, go. Oh, Look at Dr. Chris. Are you looking up my pad <laughs> Four, four, six, four. Ah, oh, this is sore. Five, ten, ten, five. Ow! Oh, I'm too old to do that. I can't even tilt my head. Okay, maybe I'll do this. Six, fifteen, twenty, fifteen, six. Tell me if I'm doing this correctly. 21, 35, 35, 21, 7. 56, 70, 56, 28. 126, 126, uh, 84, 252, 210, and finally 462. Did I do that correctly? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but then, what if the block was longer? What if it was like 100 by 500? You could just make Pascal's triangle until you get to the end? I have no doubt some of you would. Maybe there's a better way. I just taught you right here. Alpha, alpha. This is alpha, alpha. Mississippi. This is the Mississippi problem. Look, just think about it. No matter what path you take, would you agree you have to go six times east? Okay, no matter what, you gotta go six times east. No matter what, you have to go five times south. So every time you make a word, that's the that's, that's a different path that you take, right? So think about it. How many eleven-letter words can you make with six e's and five s's? Oh, wow. That's Mississippi, baby. Eleven factorial, but I have six e's. I got five s's. That's your answer right there. This is Mississippi. Isn't this a lot better than doing Pascal Triangle or the method of exhaustion? Oh, yes. Woo! What do you do if you're allowed to move in other directions? Oh, okay, then they become incredibly they're more difficult. We won't do that. Well, wouldn't there be an infinite number of ways then? 
Oh yeah, sure. If you can just go any direction, <laughs> right? No, that would be an infinite number. Okay, next problem. How many ways can you place eight identical balls, I'm waiting for something, into three boxes? Cool? Four people into three boxes. What? <laughs> I get it. <laughs> okay, but I'm not going to do the same problem. I'm going to do different numbers. Okay, so seven balls. Now what are you going to say? <laughs> seven balls. 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 Seven and instead of three boxes, we're going to put it into four boxes. So how many ways, and the key to this problem is that these balls are identical now. <laughs> what is this? It's great though. <laughs> because if the balls are different colors, in fact, you know what? We'll do different, uh, different balls, but this one we're going to do like identical balls. Maybe I should use like... A different word instead of marbles. Then. How about that marbles? Yeah, marbles are so much better. <laughs> What's the difference? Different okay, let me show you how to do this. Let me show you how to do this. Because this is alfalfa again. This is Mississippi. You have to boil it down. Now, this is a classic problem in common cards. So now, think about it. How many ways can I put these seven balls into these four boxes? Well, one way is you could put seven in here and then zero, zero, zero. Right? Or you could put six one zero zero, six zero one zero, six zero zero one, and you can just keep counting until you get them all. <laughs> the method of exhaustion. I don't think we want to do that. So what would be a better way? Well, think about it. If you have four boxes, then you need three sticks. Okay. So I have three <laughs> sticks. <laughs> like that. So. The problem boils down to how many ways can I put these three sticks among the seven balls? Like here, what, the, what does this represent? Two in the first, two in the second, two in the third, and one in the fourth, right? What if I did this? What does that mean? Four in the first, one in the second, two in the third, and none in the fourth. What does this mean? All in the fourth box. So now the problem reduces to how many ways can I put three sticks among the seven balls? Or I got seven balls and three sticks, that's ten things all together. How many ten letter words can I make with seven O's and three I's? Think of the balls as O's and the sticks as I's. Isn't this Mississippi again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if they were all different, the answer would be 10 factorial, but I got seven O's, and I got three sticks. Boom! That's the answer. What happens when you need to have one, at least one in each box? We did that last year, Lee. Remember at Zippy's? No. How come I remember? Because I'm old. <laughs> uh, what? You're what? I'm like 60 years old already. And I remember we were sitting down at Zippy's, going over, because the Zippies. problem came up. Yeah, we were at Zippy's in downtown, because, because of Lee, he had an orchestra performance, so we had to move it from this room to Zippy's downtown, <laughs> so he could come from the, the orchestra performance, do the math, and then go back. You remember that? For what? Yeah. For, for, for what? For math bowl practice, because oh. we had the math bowl following him. Anyway, no, I don't want to discuss that now because we're running out of time. But we'll do it I want to discuss this though. What would happen if the balls were all different colors though? Different kids. <laughs> so like what if you had a red, orange, yellow, blue, no, roy, G, G, green, blue, indigo, violet balls. <laughs> How many, now, how many ways can I put these seven balls into the four boxes? Come on, let's do it. What would you do? Okay, I'll just tell you already. The first ball, okay, take out the red ball. How many choices does this red ball have? The red ball got four choices. Okay, go ahead. So this one got four choices. Now the orange ball, how many choices do I got? Four. What about the yellow ball? Four. What about green? Blue. Indigo. Violet. So the answer is four to the seventh ball. So that's the difference between if the balls are identical or the balls are all different. Okay, 
Wait, 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 wait. We haven't done the wait, wait. Okay, oh. Oh, look at that last problem. That last problem is gonna bust your bridges. That's my boss. Okay, that's it. We'll sit in the back. Oh, really? Okay, we'll sit outside. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's a line you don't cross, Cole. Okay, this is the last thing we're learning today. What if you have six people? Alfredo, Bernardo, Carlos, Diego, and Water of Fuego. How many ways can you arrange them in a row? Six at Florida. Everybody can do that? But now, how many ways can you arrange them around a circular table? Is the answer still six factorial? Wow. No, because see, if you have six people all in a row, what would happen if everybody stood up and shifted one down? That means Fuego would have to come to the front, right? But when you have a circular table like this, what if everybody stood up and shifted one to the right or same, clockwise? Same thing. Isn't that the same arrangement? Because when the waiter goes around the table, he's going to encounter them in the same order, right? So how do you adjust for this? Well, what do you do? Well, this is what we do. When you have circular permutations, what we do is we fix a person. So you, you pick one of these people. Diego, you must sit over there. So this takes care of the rotations, okay? Diego, sit over there. Now, how many choices do I have for this seat? Five. Five, then this four. one. Four, three, two, one. Oh, so the answer is five factorial. So let's generalize. If you have n people seated around a circular table, how many ways can you arrange them? N minus one, n minus one factorial. <laughs> you get it? Mm -hmm. Or another way to think of it is like this one, six factorial, except how many different rotations are there? Six. There's six rotations, so divided by six, you get five factorial. Whatever. Probably the easiest for you guys is just memorize n minus 1 factorial. Now, do you think you're going to see a problem like this on the test? There are 10 people. Oh. There are 10, just like, you know, when you go to a prom or something, a wedding, don't they have 10 seats around a circular table? Yes. How many ways can you arrange 10 people around a circular table? Nine. The answer is 9 factorial. And remember, I told you guys to memorize. Now it's going to pay off. What is 9 factorial? Chan, redeem yourself. No clue. Oh, come on. Cole! Remember I told you 10 factorial is equal to 3,628,800? Yes. Therefore, 9 factorial is 362,880. Just divided by 10. See, it comes in handy. Now, do you think I'm going to get a problem that easy on the test? No. There's no way. There is no way. And then it becomes tougher. Would that be a test? Time? No. Oh. But what you are going to get on the test is the prom problem. This is the prom problem. Right here. How many ways can I arrange five couples around a circular table? You guys know what a couple is, right? Thank you. How many ways can I arrange five couples around a circular table if each couple must sit together? Well, you know, no problem. Aren't you sitting next to your date? No. Or no, can you please sit over there? No problem, my friend. It's okay, Arjun. Is that what you guys do? Arjun, that's No, you guys sit next to your date. Well, I, I, I never went to a problem in my life, so I don't know. But that's what I heard goes on. You sit next to your date. Okay, anyway, so that's the stipulation here. How many ways can you arrange five couples around the circular table if each couple has to sit together? So, whenever you do combination, I mean permutations, if people have to sit together, instead of making separate seats for them, you just make a love bench. Because <laughs> 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 they got to be together. <laughs> oh, did you get it? <laughs> oh, okay, bench them. You guys understand? If people have to sit together, just make a bench. Instead of putting two separate seats, put a bench there. So if I have five couples, then I need five love benches. <laughs> okay, now, I have five benches. How many ways can I arrange five benches around a circular table? Four factorial, right? N minus one factorial, memorize. But on this bench, 
got two people, how many ways can they be arranged? Two, two factorial, right? What about this one? Yeah. Two factorial. What about that one? What about that one? What about that one? Boom! That's your answer. That's how many ways you can you can see five couples around the circular table. This is called the prom problem. And it, can I assume you guys can multiply that up? I think it comes up to like 768. Three, four. What? Never mind. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna do it then. This is 24, and this is 32. So 24 times 32. So this is 28 minus four. What? I think there's four twos. There's five benches. Oh. oh, then there's six. Twenty-eight seven. plus four, so this is twenty-eight squared minus four squared. So that's gonna be what's twenty-eight squared? Seven. Seven. No, seven. No, seven. That, that's just not sixteen. No. Twenty-eight squared. Oh, I need the answer. No, the answer. Seven eighty-two. Seven eighty-two minus sixteen. How can it be seven eighty-two? It's seven eighty-four. So that's how you get seven sixty-eight. There. Are you guys wondering what I'm doing? How about just do this then? 32 times 24. Just do that. 768. So here's an interesting game you can play at the prom. Like, because some people, you know, you just, no, when you go to a prom with your date, sometimes you just don't know what to say, right? Like, oh, the weather was nice today. <laughs> wow, your dress looks nice. <laughs> well, I mean, you just run out of things to say. So since there are 768 ways, you can just say, hey, Every minute, let's do a different permutation. <laughs> so, on the test, you know what you're going to see? You're going to get the prom problem, except, except Snap, Crackle, and Pop got to sit together. Larry, Moe, and Curly got to sit together. It doesn't matter what you do, just make the love bench and you'll be fine. <laughs> Except when you got <laughs> when you put three, fa three factorial of those there. Three factorial. And if got four people, can you think of four things like the oh, three musketeers, right? <laughs> no, the three musketeers are actually four people, right? What? Why? I don't know, because I watched the cartoon when I was young. <laughs> Artemis Fowl. Portos and Diego and D'Artagnan. <laughs> oh yeah, that was the Slim Jim Yeah. Wait, Orthos, Portos. Portos. Is this real? Antonio. Who's the first guy he said? Orthos, Portos, Aramis, and the guy who said D'Artagnan. Diego. <laughs> Why are we even talking about this? Because I need four. What if I needed five people? A Jackson Five. Michael, Jermaine, Tito, Jackie, and Randy. <laughs> anyway, when people gotta be seated together, just put them on a bench. That's the simplest thing. Okay, we are done. The bell rings in two minutes. Oh, and wait, you have it. Oh! I just want you to look at these last two problems just to see what you need to think of. How many rectangles are there on an 8x8 checkerboard? Okay, this is the way you would do it in elementary school. In fact, I substituted for uh, element 6th grade one day and I said, okay, well, I don't care what problem your teacher gave you, we're going to do this. No, I don't know. <laughs> How many one by one rectangles are there? 64. How many two by one rectangles are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in that row alone. But then you got eight 